JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 31st until February the 4th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a relatively busy week ahead of us with three central banks, uh, with three central banks deciding on monetary policy. Those are the RBA, the Bank of England, and the ECB. Only the Bank of England is expected to act and lift interest rates, but this doesn't mean that the others will pass unnoticed. On the contrary, participants may be eager to find out opinions and views with regards to their, to their future course of course of action. Now, on Friday, we have the U.S. employment report, which could add credence to the view of a March hike by the Fed and multiple more for the rest of the year. But let's take let's uh, take things uh, from the beginning. Today, during the Asian trading, we already got Japan's preliminary industrial production for January and the retail sales for December. Industrial production slid 1% month over month after rising 7%. Uh, while retail sales slowed to 1.4% from 1.9%. Uh, the important thing here is that Chinese markets were closed and will stay closed for the whole week in celebration of uh, the Lunar New Year. Now, later in the day, we have Eurozone's preliminary GDP for the fourth quarter and, Germa and Germany's preliminary inflation data for January. Euros Eurozone's GDP is expected to have slowed to 0.3% quarter over quarter from 2.2%, but this would take the year over year rate up to 4 0.7% from 3.9%. In any case, a slowdown in Eurozone GDP uh, adds uh, credence to our view that uh, the ECB is unlikely to raise interest rates uh, this year, despite some speculation on that front. But we will uh, check that uh, more when we will describe the ECB decision. In Germany, both the CPI and the HICP rates are, ex are expected to have declined to 4.3 and 4.7% year over year from 5.3 and 5.7%, adding more uh, credence to our view. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA decides on interest rates, but no action is expected. At its latest gathering, at their latest gathering, officials uh, noted that uh, rates could start rising in 2023 meaning that they will stay untouched uh, this year. However, market participants have a different opinion. According to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, they expect the first rate hike to be delivered in May, while they see the official cash rate exceeding 1% by year end. In other words, they anticipate slightly more than four, uh, four rate increases this year. Yes, Australian data have been supporting the idea that uh, the liftoffs could start uh, this year with the unemployment rate sliding decently in December and inflation uh, for the last three months of 2021 accelerating by more than expected. However, even if the RBA sounds more optimistic than previously and perhaps opens the door for higher rates in 2022, we see the notion of hinting for hikes by December as uh, very unlikely. Therefore, with all that in mind, we see ample room for disappointment, something that could add extra pressure to the already wounded Aussie. So, uh, uh, in very few words, the Aussie has been uh, in a declining mode recently due to the risk of environment that was triggered by the hoggish uh, FOMC recently. And even if the RBA sounds more optimistic than previously, the paradox here is that the Aussie could still come under uh, selling pressure because of the already elevated expectations with regards to 
uh, future rate hikes. Now, as for the data ahead of the RBA decision, Australia releases its retail sales for December and Japan its employment report for the same month. Later in the day, we get the final manufacturing PMIs for January from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US, but as it is usually the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The US ISM, uh, the U excuse me, the US ISM manufacturing index for the month is coming out as well. And expectations are for a slide to 57.5 from 58.7. Actually, although a decline, uh, the index remains well above the equilibrium line of 50. We doubt that it will alter expectations uh, with regards to the Fed's future course of action. In Canada, the monthly GDP for November is expected to reveal a slowdown to 0.4% month over month from 0.8%. Now on Wednesday, in the early Asian morning, New Zealand's employment, uh, unemployment rate for the fourth quarter is expected to have stayed unchanged, with the employment change expected to slow to have slowed to 0.3% from 2%. Uh, that said, the labor costs index is expected to have accelerated to 2.9% year over year from 2.5%, keeping the door open the door the door open for more uh, rate hikes by the RBNZ. Now, in the Eurozone, both headline and core inflation are expected to have slowed notably, adding to chances that the ECB will sound dovish on Thursday. While in the US, the ADP report is expected to, um, to show that the private sector added 208,000 jobs in January from uh, after adding 807,000 in December. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of England and the ECB. First, we have the Bank of England, which at its uh, latest gathering decided to push the hike button um, for the first time since the outbreak of the coronavirus, lifting interest rates to 0.25% from 0.10% and adding that more, uh, that more modest tightening is underway. Now, recent UK, recent UK data have been relatively supported with the unemployment rate declining further in November, the CPI is accelerating more than anticipated in December, and the preliminary PMI is revealing further economic expansion during the month of January, despite the slower pace than in December. Thus, we do see the case for a quarter point increase at this gathering, and actually this is not only our view, but uh, the market consensus as well. According to the UK overnight index uh, swaps forward yield, yield curve, investors are fully pricing in such an action while they see the case for nearly four more hikes by the end of the year. Therefore, a 25 basis points hike by itself is unlikely to prove a, a major market mover. So market attention is likely to fall to close um, is likely to fall to close and hints on how fast how fast policymakers are, are planning to proceed with upcoming liftoffs. What's more, remember that 0.5% is the level the bank placed as a threshold for beginning to shrink its balance sheet. Therefore, we will look for references on that front as well, as well as, as, well as on the updated economic projections. Let's not forget that this will be a super Thursday for the Bank of England. So, anything suggesting an aggressive rate path and the balance sheet reduction as early as uh, this week could support the British um, pound, which due to monetary policy divergences uh, could keep outperforming currencies like the Aussie and the Euro. Now, speaking about the Euro, soon after the Bank of England decision, we have the ECB decision on uh, monetary policy, but no action is expected from this bank. Despite market participants assigning a small rate uh, increase by the end of, uh, of uh, this year, the governing council has been holding the view that um, something like that is unlikely. ECB President Christine Lagarde expressed the view that's, uh, that view several times in the past, while a couple of weeks ago she said that inflation in the Eurozone will decrease gradually over the course of uh, the year and that the ECB did not need to act as boldly as uh, as the Fed due to a different economic uh, situation. Therefore, the GDP 
and the CPI is uh, with the GDP and the CPI is expected to reveal a slowdown for the fourth quarter and January respectively. We believe that Lagarde and her colleagues will repeat the view that interest rates are unlikely to be lifted this year, something that could come as a disappointment to those expecting a small lift off and thus the euro may come under more selling interest. Actually, this could be the case even before the ECB meeting if the aforementioned economic uh, data, the GDP and the CPI is disappointed by a large uh, margin. Now, as for, th as for Thursday's data, we have the final market services and composite PMIs for January from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as well as the ISM non-manufacturing index for the month. As it is usually the case, the final market prints are expected to confirm their initial uh, forecasts, while the ISM index anticipated to have declined somewhat to 59.3 from 62.3. Now, finally, on Friday, the main item on the agenda may be the US employment report for January. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed to 155k from 199k, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have stayed unchanged at 3.9%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed to 0.5% month over month from 0.6%, but barring any major deviations to the prior monthly prints, this would take the year-over-year -year rate up to 5.2% from 4.7%, which could add to expectations of further acceleration in the, in the US inflation for the, for the months to come. In our view, the forecasts uh, point to another decent report, despite a potential slowdown in the NFPs, which could add credence to the Fed's view of a March rate hike and some more during the rest of the year. Remember that the December dot plot pointed to three quarter point liftoffs for 2022, but according to the Fed fund futures, investors are convinced that the committee will proceed with nearly five. Thus, if the forecasts are met or even better exceeded, market participants may become more confident with regards to their view and could buy more US dollars. Now, at the same time with the US employment report, we get jobs data for January from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 6.2% from 5.9%, while the employment change is anticipated to show that the Canadian economy has lost 125,000 jobs after adding 54.7 thousand in December. A weak report could hurt the Canadian dollar, but not much in our view as last week, the Bank of Canada provided strong signals with regards to a rate hike in March, and we don't believe that these numbers could change that. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye, have a nice day, and a greater rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.